Craig Doherty with Blue Castle Games. I'm the uh, director of talent strategy and acquisition there. All right, excellent. Okay, so uh, on this rainy day at GDC 2010, uh, I came up to the booth, and so you can see me, random face talking. Uh, there was a a, a a paddle with uh, chainsaws attached to it. Uh, Dead Rising 2, uh, it's being uh, published by Capcom, released on August 31st on three platforms, uh, Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. So uh, what did uh, Blue Castle do before they got into Dead Rising? Uh, we've shipped uh, three previous titles, The Bigs, The Bigs 2, and uh, an MLB Front Office Managers. So all three of those projects utilize the MLB uh, license, their baseball titles. So The Bigs and Bigs 2 are more arcade-style Pick up and play type games. They were released on five platforms, uh, published by 2K Sports, Take Two Interactive. Um, and so, what afforded us the opportunity to work on Dead Rising was um, the, all of our technology, our game engine, our rendering engine, our audio engine, uh, is developed in house uh, at Blue Castle Games from the ground up. We license nothing as it relates to that technology, uh, which is kind of a cool thing, you know, because it allows us to re really be able to create things that not a lot of other people can. And so, so you're just like, this is mine. No one gets to play with my toys. Exactly. You can't touch mine. No. Uh, no, re really, it, to be honest, though, what it allowed us to do, it, is gave, it gave us a tremendous amount of flexibility. Don't get me wrong. There's certainly a, a boatload of challenges that come with developing your own tech rather than, say, for instance, going to the Unreal Engine, which is obviously a great product. Um, but rather than work within the realm that is uh, an engine like Unreal or something similar, in, in that this is what you can do within this environment, shoehorn your game into this. It really allowed us to create our tech from the ground up. So in doing that, uh, Capcom, when they were chatting with us, noticed this technology. Uh, we then put together a prototype for Dead Rising, utilizing this engine, proving that we can animate, for instance, up to 7,000 zombies at any one given time on the screen, which then had them identify, interesting, we didn't know that this could be done on the 360 as an example, uh, and uh, we began work on Dead Rising at that point. So, uh, so your your specific job title for for Blue Castle? Yeah. That means really I'm accountable for things like employment branding, recruiting, university relations, uh, all of that good stuff that's associated with the company, its positioning out there uh, in the marketplace, and so on. So when whenever you were working, whenever this specific title was coming up, what were some of the challenges that, that you personally had to, to, I mean, I'm assuming new game, new people that you needed. Well, actually, what, what were the, the, the challenge is, is, you know, we had to hire, when I started with the company in June, July 2007, uh, we were sitting at 50 people. Within a year, we grew to about 140 people. Now, the added... The added piece to that, not only is that just a lot of people to hire, uh, and these are experienced, accomplished professionals, um, we also couldn't talk about Dead Rising 2. It wasn't public at the time. So that's a challenge that's found really anywhere in the gaming industry. You're always faced with that. You know, for instance, in, additional, in, in addition to, to Dead Rising 2, we're also developing another project that is unannounced. So it's, it, the difference is now, though, at least people know who Blue Castle Games is. Back then, not a lot of people knew who Blue Castle Games was, and uh, not only that, they knew us only as a sports-only studio. So to now not be able to talk about what it is we're working on, and I'm setting out to then try and find these ultra-experienced people who've worked on some pretty kick-ass open-world action projects, and that's all I can say is open-world action projects, you know, it, it, was a, it was a real big challenge for us, you know, to be able to jump from sort of 50 people through to 120 people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, whenever you... As you're as you're doing that, as you're growing and expanding, what has the you know the recent job market? A lot of people are laying off people from games. You know, I mean, are you in a position that you can really cherry pick who who you want now, or is it? Well, I, I never want to sound cocky and say that we can cherry pick this and that. I mean, we're, we're at GDC really to, and I'm going to answer your question in a moment, but just <laughs> just to sort of talk about why we're here. It, it is actually to educate people to know that actually Blue Castle, though we're this 160-person company located in Vancouver, we're actually a very viable option for someone, either be a software engineer, an artist, or whatever it may be. Um, even if you've come from the likes of working on Gears of War, Halo, or World of Warcraft, or any of those sort of epic, hugely successful projects, Blue Castle's actually working on some AAA projects that are is, and is a very viable studio uh, to come work at as well. So that's sort of the first thing. Now, you said that, you know, you're, you're based in Vancouver, so uh, do you get 
any sort of like I, I hear Canada has some really stringent laws about you know if you want to work in Canada you got to do some special things to get there. Well, the special things is experience. So you're absolutely right. It is challenging, for instance, for a new grad uh, or even an intern to come work at Blue Castle Game. And this isn't specific to Blue Castle, to come work in Canada, uh, which is, you know, is unfortunate. But at the same time, you have to see it from their point of view that um, obviously we have many, many schools and universities and programs up there focused in on game design, animation, art, uh, comp sci, of course, throughout all the universities. And if we're turning around and offering those opportunities to people outside of Canada, non-Canadian citizens, they've paid their tuition, they've gone to school, they have this degree now and are looking for work, and there's less jobs available because we're giving them away to people who aren't from Canada. So I, I, I get that. You know, I, I do understand that. At the same time, it is frustrating because, you know, there's obviously some brilliant talent down here, uh, both in the United States and in Europe and overseas, that we're just not able to tap into. Uh, from a new graduate perspective. From an experienced professional perspective, let's say if I met someone here who had, you know, eight years of experience, shipped two, three titles, um, would be interesting to chat with, of course, but you're right, that we would then still have to go through an immigration relocation process with that individual, and, in, and every situation is different. You know, with that, it really it does differ, and, and so there's no sort of common solution that can occur with every single candidate. Whenever you said that, it made me think that you've had a, a couple couple experiences that made you go, oh, I wish we didn't have to go through. Oh, lots. Yeah. Lots. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, though, for the right people, we're willing to wait. But it, it's, it's just painful because, obviously, while an immigration process is happening or we're waiting for paperwork or whatever it may be, there's ultimately not someone in that chair doing the job. So, it, you know, it's challenging to be able to work with, you know, the art directors or whoever it may be that's waiting for that individual to start. And, of course, they don't care about the immigration process. They just want someone, obviously, at work getting things started. Why now, aren't they coding? Pretty, pretty, exactly. Now, you know what? A lot of our, I, I kind of exaggerate, a lot of our guys have been in the business long enough that they get it. They understand that good people that aren't from here take a while to land, and they themselves maybe have gone through it. So they kind of know if they've bounced to the U.S. and then back, and they've got families, and they're relocating a house, and, you know, these things. There's just so many different variables that factor in. This is this is excellent. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Have a, have a good show. Thank you. <laughs>